Hello students, welcome to online maths classroom. Today we are going to take up a Rose theorem and Lagrange's mean value theorem from your topic continuity and differentiability. In this video, we will solve exercise 5.8 question number 1 to question number 6. So let us understand what is your Rose theorem. A Rose theorem states that let f is a function mapping from closed interval AB to R. Be a continuous function on closed interval AB and differentiable on open interval AB such that f of a is equal to f of b where AB are both real numbers. Then there exists some c in this open interval AB such that f dash c is equal to 0. Okay. So let us understand there are three conditions. First is that the function is continuous in closed interval AB. Second is function is differentiable in open interval AB. Third is the value of the function at both the endpoints is same. Then there exists a point C in between this open interval at which the derivative is having the value as 0. Okay. So let us see geometrically what is the meaning of this statement. See we take a continuous curve okay, between two points, two real numbers A and B. You know very well what is the meaning of closed interval means both AB are included and all the numbers between AB they are also included. Now see the curve must be continuous between closed interval AB. When we talk about continuity, continuity starts from the endpoints. Okay, means function should not be having any break from A to B. Okay, so means the function is continuous in closed interval AB as the function is starting from one endpoint to the other. So continuity is always checked in the closed interval. Okay, differentiable. Differentiable means rate of change. Is the function changing? Yes, it is increasing like this and then it suddenly starts decreasing. But it is changing at every point. Okay, so means between this interval, the function should be differentiable. Now, differentiability is checked in open interval. Why? Because at the end point, you will not find the rate of change. For means C, you are, you are, you are, you are standing somewhere and you have, to, you have to go in particular direction. Okay, so you have to take the next step so that it decides whether you are forwarding towards that particular direction. Okay, similarly, end point never gives you to check the differentiability. For differentiability to be checked, it should be away from the end points. Means from the second point at least inside you need from where. If I am proceeding from there to there, then only one can talk about what is my rate of change. Okay, so that's why differentiability is always checked in open interval AB. Moreover, this curve is no doubt continuous and differentiable in this interval, but the value of the function at A should be same as value of the function at B. So, you know, it's a parabolic type of curve. Okay, means it is increasing first, then it starts decreasing. That's why the value at A is equal to value at B. Similarly, in this diagram also, below x axis even, above x axis even, the curve is changing its behavior. Okay, means the value at here and here is same and the value at here and here is same. Okay, then what happens, he says, if all these conditions are satisfied, then there comes a point in between this open interval AB at which the derivative is zero. Okay, this is your f of c. Okay, at which the rate of change is zero. See, something is increasing and it has started decreasing. That means for one moment, as you know, in case of projectile, Okay, the you know that the the zero situation comes here. There is no change for a moment. That's why the increase suddenly starts decreasing. Similarly, this decrease starts increasing. Okay, so means it changes its direction. So this this f dash c is zero. The value of the derivative at this point is zero. Okay, and this is the condition of Rose theorem that if a curve is continuous in closed interval AB, differentiable in open interval AB. And f of a equal to f of b. If all these conditions are satisfied, then there exists some c in this open interval a b such that f dash c is equal to 0. Derivative at that point is 0. Okay. And if you draw a tangent at this point, you see this tangent is parallel to x axis. And since the slope of x axis is also 0, so the slope of this line is also 0. Okay. Similarly, here also. 
for this again tangent is parallel to x axis okay observe what happens to the slope of tangent to the curve at various points between a and b in each of the graphs the slope becomes zero at least at one point see from here from here and from here that is precisely the claim of rose theorem as the slope of tangent at any point on the graph y is equal to fx is nothing but it is the derivative of the function at that point so slope is nothing but the derivative of the function at that point so i think these conditions are clear to you about how to check the uh, rose theorem is verified for a function or not second is your mean value theorem this is also called as lagrange's mean value theorem let a function f is mapping from a to b to r is continuous function in closed interval ab differentiable in open interval ab both first and second conditions are same the difference lies in only in the third condition here the value of the function at a is not equal to value of the function at b okay and in that case there exists some c in between such that f dash c is equal to f of b minus f of a upon b minus a okay so let us understand it from here from this figure c there is a curve okay this is point a this is point b no doubt the curve is your continuous in closed interval eb it is also differentiable as the rate of changes going on in open interval eb okay and he says that also f of a is not equal to f of b you can see f of a is not equal to f of b okay both the values are not same that means that's why rose theorem is not applicable here then he says that there will be a point c in this interval eb at which the derivative value of the derivative at this point will be equal to say this if we draw the tangent at this point in rose theorem it was parallel to x axis but here it this tangent is parallel to the chord joining these two points see the tangent is parallel to the chord joining these two points okay and we know when the when the ten, when both two lines are parallel their slopes are equal okay so the tangent here is having slope f dash c okay and what is the slope of this line this line is having the slope as f of b minus f of a upon b minus a y2 minus y1 upon x2 minus x1 and since both lines are parallel so these slopes are equal okay and this is the final condition of your lagrange's mean value theorem that there exists some c at which this this tangent is parallel to the chord that means f dash c means the slopes are equal f dash c equal to f of b minus f of a upon b minus a observe that mean value theorem is an extension of rose theorem let us now understand a geometric interpretation of mean value theorem the graph of a function is given okay we have already interpreted f dash c as the slope of tangent to the curve y equal to fx at the point c and fc now it is clear f of b minus f of a upon b of minus a is the slope of secant okay between these two points okay the mean value theorem states that there is a point such that slope of tangent at this point is same as slope of secant between these two points in other words there is a point c in ab such that tangent at this point is parallel to the secant between these two points secant you must be knowing okay the c difference between secant and tangent you are aware about it so finally let us see what is the difference between rose theorem and mean value theorem if f is a function that is continuous in closed interval eb differentiable in open interval eb and value of the function at both the endpoints is same then there exists a number c in open interval eb such that f dash c is equal to 0 okay so see all the cases you can see whether it is all the different figures they are stating just this condition that if the function is behaving like this you will always find a tangent which is parallel to x axis and that's why it is parallel to x axis its slope is getting vanished that is f dash c is equal to 0 okay at this point you will only get in the open interval eb okay now see this is a constant line so derivative is everywhere zero okay so for a constant function the derivative is zero mean value theorem says if the third condition is not same like if f of a is not equal to f of b then in that case you see whether the curve is like this or is like this 
you will always find that this is the slope of the chord okay slope of this chord or slope of secant okay so this tangent is always parallel to the secant okay all these tangents are parallel to the secant all these conditions in which f of a is not equal to f of b okay and in such case f dash c is equal to f of b minus f of a upon b minus a okay which can also be rearranged like this f of b minus f of a equal to f dash c times b minus a but for our convenience purpose we use this okay so i hope we should start solving the questions based upon rose theorem and mean value theorem this is your exercise 5.8 in which we will be applying rose theorem and lagrange's mean value theorem from question number 1 to 6 question number 1 of your ncert is verify rose theorem for the function fx equal to x square plus 2x minus 8 where x belongs to closed interval minus 4 2 so we have to verify rose theorem for this quadratic polynomial so let us recapitulate what are the conditions of rose theorem number 1 says fx should be continuous in closed interval ab number 2 fx should be differentiable in open interval ab number 3 is function at a means at the left hand side end point uh, the value should be equal to the value of the function at right hand side end point that is f of b and if all these conditions are satisfied then it be in between this interval minus 4 to open interval minus 4 to you will get a point c at which this derivative is zero okay so let us start verifying this so condition number 1 is as we know fx is equal to x square plus 2x minus 8 is a polynomial and we know every polynomial function is continuous for all x belonging to r so that means this function is continuous at x belonging to closed interval minus 4 2 condition number 2 is fx is equal to x square plus 2x minus 8 so what is the derivative of it the derivative will be 2x plus 2 which is again a polynomial and definitely is existing in open interval minus 4 2 there is no problem in the existence of the derivative okay now condition number 3 fx is your x square plus 2x minus 8 and i need to check its A values at the two end points. So f of minus four is zero, and f of two also turns out to be zero. That means the third condition of Rose theorem is also verified. So we get f of minus four is equal to f of two. Also, f of x is x square plus two x minus eight, for which the derivative is two x plus two. F dash c will be two c plus two can be obtained just by replacing x by c. so all the three conditions are satisfied that means f dash c is equal to 0 that is 2c plus 2 is 0 and we get c as minus 1 now the last thing we need to verify this minus 1 should be lying in the open interval minus 4 is it lying yes it is lying between this values okay so rose theorem is satisfied question number 2 says examine if rose theorem is applicable to the functions can you say something about the converse of rose theorem from this function okay so let us see the first function is fx is equal to greatest integer function x for x belonging to closed interval 5 and 9 so first of all we need to recapitulate what is the greatest integer less than or equal to x so if you remember we say that the values of x if we put the value inside 3 the greatest integer will be 3 itself for 3.1 also it will be 3 itself for 3.999 between it is lying between 3 and 4 and towards left you will get 3 for 2.999 it is lying between 2 and 3 so towards left is 2 so we will get it as 2 so by the concept value of x if c it is again c for c plus means like c plus h it will be c towards the left and for c minus h like of thing like like from here okay c minus h of thing you will be having c minus 1 okay so this is the definition also which we have done for greatest integer function now you know that greatest integer function is your not continuous and differentiable so first two conditions of rose theorem are not satisfied 
So that's why Rho's theorem is not applicable here. Okay. For the second function also, between minus 2 to 2, again the same conditions can be followed. And again, since this greatest integer function is neither continuous nor differentiable, so conditions of Rho's theorem not verified, so it is not applicable. Third part is fx is equal to x square minus 1, x belonging to closed interval 1, 2. So first condition is your, since it is a polynomial function, and every polynomial function is continuous, so fx is continuous in closed interval 1, 2. Second condition is the derivative is your 2x, okay? So 2x is no problem. It is lying between polynomial function is there and it is, you know, it is continuous. So it is differentiable also in open interval 1, 2, okay? Condition number 3 says that the value at the end point say f of n is 0 and f of 2 is 3. So we find that f of 1 and f of 2 both are not equal. So third condition of Rho theorem is not verified. So that's why Rho's theorem is not applicable. But in this question, if you understand, then Rho's theorem is not applicable, but it is satisfying all conditions of Lagrange's mean value theorem. So that theorem will be applicable. Now, to check the applicability of converse of Rho's theorem as if the Rho's theorem is not applicable, we could not go for even converse. But here, uh, we can check whether the converse of Rho's theorem is applicable or not. So, f dash c is 2c, okay? f dash c is 0, that means c is 0. But this 0 value does not belong to your original question value 1 and 2. So, there is no value of c for which f dash c is 0, hence converse of Rho's theorem is also not applicable. Question number three is, if f mapping from minus 5 to 5 closed interval to r is differentiable function and if f dash does not vanish anywhere, does not uh, vanish anywhere means that the derivative is not zero. Then prove that f of minus 5 is not equal to f of 5. Okay, so since the function is differentiable, that means it is already continuous. You must remember it that every differentiable function is continuous. But every continuous function may or may not be differentiable. So since this function is differentiable, so it is continuous also. Okay. So by mean value theorem, there exists some C. As we know that Lagrange's theorem is not applicable as at the end points, the function is not having equal value. So by mean value theorem, there exists some C in this your open interval 5 minus 5, which uh, gives the f dash C equal to f of b minus f of a upon b minus a. Okay. And because that f dash x does not vanish anywhere, means this derivative value of the derivative is not equal to 0. Therefore, f dash c is not equal to 0. Okay. This condition is there. That means your this value f of b is here 5 minus 5 and 5. a is minus 5, b is 5. So, f of 5 minus f of minus 5 upon 5 minus minus 5 is not equal to 0. That means from clearly after solving, this can be taken to other side, 0 into 10, which is 0, okay? And we get f of 5 is not equal to f of minus 5. So, hence, it is proved. Number 4 is verify mean value theorem for function x square minus 4x minus 3 in the interval, close interval, a, b, where a is 1 and b is 4. So, the conditions for mean value theorem are, your function is x square minus 4x minus 3, which is your continuous function as every polynomial function is continuous. So, it is also continuous in closed interval 1. Second is differentiability. So, the derivative is 2x minus 4, which is again polynomial is having its derivative also lying between your open interval 1, 4. Okay. And condition number 3 is let us check the values for uh, endpoints. Okay. And also the derivative here is 2x minus 4, so derivative is f dash c is your 2c minus 4. Now, f of a, which is f of 1, is coming out to be minus 6, and f of b, which is f of 4, is minus 3. So, both are not equal, and so all conditions of mean value theorem are satisfied. That means f dash c is equal to f of b minus f of a upon b minus a. So, f of b is your minus 3 and minus of minus 6. Upon 4 minus 1 and we get f dash c as 1. Okay. So f dash c is your 1 and f dash c is your 2c minus 4. From where we get 
C as pi by 2. And this is lying between open interval 1, 4. That means C is equal to 5 by 2, belongs to open interval 1, 4. That means mean value theorem is satisfied. Number 5 is verify mean value theorem if fx is a cubic polynomial in the interval ab where a is 1, b is 3 and you have also find all c belonging to open interval 1, 3 for which f dash c is 0. So let us start as it is a polynomial and every polynomial function is continuous. So this function is continuous in closed interval 1, 3. Okay and the derivative we will talk about it is 3x square minus 10x minus 3. Okay, which is clearly belonging to your open interval 1, 3. So it is differential. And after C is having the value, just replace X by your C. So 3C square minus 10C minus 3. Okay. F of A, which is F of 1 is minus 7. F of B, which is F of 3 is minus 27. So all conditions of mean value theorem are verified. So f dash c is equal to f of b minus f of a upon b minus a. So this is your f dash c which is quadratic polynomial 3c square minus 10c minus 3 and the values of f of b and f of a place from here and after reduction it will give me a quadratic equation 3c square minus 10c plus 7 equal to 0 which after factorization can be taken as 3c minus 7 into c minus 1 equal to 0. c is your 7 by 3 or 1. Okay. So now c. I have to take the value which is lying in open interval 1, 3. And you find that 1 is not lying in open interval 1, 3. Okay. But 7 by 3 is lying between open interval 1, 3. So this mean value theorem is verified for the value C is equal to 7 by 3. Now find all C belonging to 1, 3 for which F dash C equal to 0. This is the part you need to verify it along after this question also. So, we need to find that C belonging to this open interval 1, 3 for which F dash C is 0. So, this is your F dash C, 3C square minus 10C minus 3 equal to 0. Okay. So, to solve it, uh, we can apply the formula for minus B plus minus quadratic formula B square minus 4AC upon 2A and we get the value of C as 5 plus minus root 34 by 3. Now, we need to work it out a little bit. From this part, you will get C as 3.61. And from this part, you'll get it as minus 0.28. Now, C, what values are satisfying? You will find even this 3.61 is out of open interval 1, 3. And even minus 0.28, it is also not lying in this range. So, there is no value of C belonging to 1, 3 for which this function or derivative is giving you value 0. Number 6 is examine the applicability of mean value theorem in the function fx is equal to greatest integer function x for x belonging to 5 and 9. So this is same extension to your question number 2 of this exercise in which you have to check the applicability of mean value theorem also. Uh, Rose theorem was not applicable. So again the same conditions for greatest integer function as we did in the first part. So for 3 it is 3, 3.1 it is 3 like so means for C, the greatest integer gives you the value as C if it is an integer. And for C plus like C plus H, it will be C. And for C minus H, it will be like 1 less than the integer itself that is C minus 1. So since the function is not continuous, as uh, you can see, that left hand limit and right hand limit will not be giving me the same values. So not differentiable. Hence, the first two condition of mean value theorem are not applicable. Hence, mean value theorem is not applicable even for this question number 1 and the part number 2 also because here also only the interval is different and rest conditions are same. Now, the third part was there and they were discussed that it is not satisfying the all the conditions of your uh, Rose theorem. So, let us see uh, mean value theorem is applicable or not because the first two conditions are satisfied as fx being polynomial is Continuous everywhere, so it is continuous in your closed interval 1, 2 also. Second condition, it is differentiable also, like the derivative is 2x, which is lying in your open interval of 1, 2. Okay, and f dash c is your 2c. Now, let us check the values of endpoints that f of 1, that is f of a, that the value is turning out to be 0, f of b, which is f of 2, is 3. 
So you find that Rho's theorem was not applicable as both these values were not same. But this is the required condition for your mean value theorem. So mean value theorem is applicable and f dash c is equal to f of b minus f of a upon b minus c. So 2c is equal to your 3 minus 0 upon 2 minus 1. We get c as 3 by 2. And this is lying between your open interval 1 to 2. Hence we say mean value theorem is satisfied for this question. So I hope the concept of Rose theorem and mean value theorem is clear to you. Practice lot of questions based upon this uh, application of Rose theorem and mean value theorem. The difference just lies in the third condition. First two conditions are same. If third condition is giving you the value at the end point same, then your Rose theorem is applicable. And if the value is not same, then in that case, your mean value theorem is applicable. Okay. Thank you so much.